She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies, and all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and in her eyes. So begins the poem, She Walks in Beauty by Lord Byron. So often I've read that poem and thought the speaker was referring to a woman's beauty. But what does it mean to walk in beauty or even better and more inclusive language? What does it mean to move in beauty? This month at CLF, we'll be talking a lot about beauty, but I wanna begin our month by framing what we mean by beauty. For instance, to move in beauty is a way of seeing the world. It's an orientation where you see yourself as integral to the natural world around you. In her essay, Animal, Vegetable, Mineral, Carol Sanchez writes about how this is historically an indigenous way of viewing the world, to be one with the natural world and honor this truth. And while we don't want to appropriate Native American or American Indian practices, we can learn what it means to move in beauty. Capitalism sees the natural world as separate from humans, as a resource meant to be exploited for profit. Patriarchy sees the world as something to be subdued, something over which men in particular have dominion. We can see the way that capitalism and patriarchy, along with imperialism and colonialism, have ravaged the planet. But to move in beauty means to pay attention, to respect and honor and value the world around us, to cherish it, to pay attention to the wisdom it offers. To move in beauty is to see ourselves as part of the interdependent web and with each movement, with each breath, acknowledge the sacred and the holy in the present moment. Imagine how different your every day would be if you moved through the world looking for the sacred in each plant, in each animal, in each person. When you move in beauty, you pay attention to the details. You notice the colors and the sounds and the scents around you, how the wind feels on your skin. You look for the deeper truths of what you see. When I started seminary, we were instructed on moving in beauty as a spiritual practice, encouraged to spend a little time each day doing this, not just through rural spaces, but through urban spaces as well observing ourselves as an integral part of what we experienced around us. And I found that not only did I begin to get a sense of that interdependent web and experience the sacred around me, I began to notice things I'd never seen before. My internship site, my first year of seminary, was Chief Seattle Club, a day shelter for homeless and low-income American Indians and Alaskan Natives who live in the Seattle area. The club is located in the middle of a historically notorious area, Pioneer Square, once nicknamed Skid Row because of the prevalence of saloons and brothels and tattoo parlors. Yet despite its notorious past as the bad part of town, Pioneer Square was actually one of the original city settlements when a group of European Americans led by Arthur Denny landed on shore in the mid-1800s. Prior to the arrival of the Denny Party, Native Americans had inhabited the area for tens of thousands of years. This is the neighborhood through which I first moved in beauty. And initially I saw the culture clash of tourists holding their cell phones to the sky to photograph historic buildings amid lawyers dressed in neatly pressed suits, urgently jaywalking, and the many people, Native and non-Native, who call the street their home. The area is near King County Courthouse, as well as several homeless shelters, so it's filled with people who are waiting, waiting for food or a shower, waiting to see their lawyer, or just waiting. People stand on the street corners selling Real Change, the homeless newspaper, and everyone, it seemed to me, was either looking for or actively resisting human contact. As I witnessed all this, I noticed something I had seen many times but had never really taken a moment to look at. 
a bust of Chief Seattle, the Duwamish tribal leader after whom the city is named. The Duwamish are the first people of Seattle, and on either side of the bust are porcelain signs by artist Edgar Heap of Birds. One says, far away, brothers and sisters, we still remember you. While the other one reads, Chief Seattle, now the streets are our home. For the first time, it occurred to me that the majority of the homeless people of Seattle are its indigenous people, the people for whom this is their ancestral land. In that moment, the past and the present were no longer separated. For me, the displacement of the native people that happened in the 1800s was still happening. It had never stopped. So to move in beauty in that moment wasn't just about seeing what was beautiful. It also meant being present to witness what is true, no matter how painful. Carol Sanchez says, to be spiritual means to be inclined to honor, respect, and acknowledge the elements of our universe, both physical and non-physical, that sustain and nourish our lives, the sacred that animates us and our world. And to develop a spiritual practice of moving in beauty means to look for this sacred element. To me, this means being brave enough to see the truth, to see how the past and the present are an illusion, and that we are all connected to all that has come before and all that is yet to be. I want to encourage you this month, as we continue talking about beauty, to orient yourself toward this way of seeing, this spiritual practice of moving in beauty, to see around you what is real and true. This is one important antidote to the capitalist system. We are not separate from the world or from one another, not by time or location. And being open to the spirit of the places around you, the humanity of the people around you, and the truth of their stories is to move in beauty. Let us this month have the courage to see what is real and what is true, and to understand that we are all a part of this, that we are one.